What's going on? How y'all doing? It's your girl, Jolie Dopa, singer, songwriter, visualist. And now I have gotten something else on my plate. I have stage four breast cancer and I have been opening up about my experience. And a lot of people ask me, how are you really feeling? You know what I mean? What is it that's really going on? For one thing, I'm gonna always keep it real. You feel me? I'm never gonna just pretend that everything is amazing if it's not. Because at the end of the day, I want to be my highest version. So when someone tells you, hey, you have a terminal illness, the first thing that registers for people is, oh my gosh, she's going to die. How am I going to feel if she dies? What is it going to be like if she dies? When you say that you have cancer, a lot of people just start envisioning you as this cancer patient. And it's not something that I want to be associated with. Let me not say that. I don't believe that you have to follow down the same course when it comes to this is what you have, so this is what's going to happen to you. So I have kept a very high frequency because I'm not an idiot. I realize what's happening. I know it could go either way. I know I could live. I know other things could happen. But what I want to do is make sure that now, for the first time in my life for real, now I'm going to make sure that I'm doing the right things. I'm going to make sure that I love myself. I'm going to make sure that I'm indulging in the things that I enjoy indulging in because you really only get one life. And after you've been here for a number of years and you've gone through a number of situations, you can become pretty numb and you can become pretty confused on what it is that you truly want as a person. And so for me, this whole experience has realigned me. I'm at peace. I know what I feel. I know what I want to say. I know what I know how it is, you know, and I want to encourage people that are going through something like this or know someone that's going through something like this. It's like, you know, you could just bow out gracefully and say, hey, I have a terminal illness is what's happening I'm just gonna let it take over me I'm gonna let it just just overtake me you know what I mean no that's not what I'm gonna do I'm gonna take control of my health and believe that I can heal myself and there are so many people that have healed themselves that it's actually it's 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 absolutely devastating to me to really really just ponder upon all of the people that have died from cancer that really didn't deserve to die all the people that have died of cancer that didn't have to die. What people do is they get diagnosed with something and then they heavily rely on doctors. Okay, you're going to do six rounds of chemo, then we're going to do a mastectomy, then we're going to do radiation, then we're going to... Okay, but this is what I'm going to be doing in the process. See, when this first all started happening, I was told I had stage three, but I had to get some scans going to see if it was in my bones or whatnot. And when we learned that it was, then I became stage four. So at that point, I really was trying to like get out of doing chemo. A really close friend of mine who's actually a nurse, she was like, you need to do the chemo. Like you have to do it. So when someone first says chemo, you naturally think, oh my gosh, all my hair is gonna come out. You know what I mean? And no woman on the earth wants to hear that. No woman. I think that's why men walk around with their big bald spots and everything like nobody can see it because they're trying to hold on to their hair. Your hair is your crown. Your hair is how you feel comfortable. When you go get your hair done and it looks great, you just feel great. You feel me? So when I learned that I was going to be doing chemo and my hair was possibly going to come out because that's how I looked at it. it was like possibly it might happen, it might not. But I was doing whatever I could to keep my hair good. I was you know, moisturizing it and keeping it oiled up and making sure I was taking care of it like never before. And it still came out. This is me. This is the real me. How you let me knock old teeth from the smile trying to take me just to get up but I feel but why?
but I made sure that I was ahead of the game. If there's any kind of haircut that you've been wanting, that you've been a little bit nervous to get all these years, get the haircut. Have fun with it. Have fun with the fact that I'm going to be going through some changes and I might start looking different physically, but you know what? I'm not going to let it get to me because I'm going to love myself however I look. You know what I mean? You know when you may want to get a shortcut and you cut all your hair off and then it's like, oh my gosh, how do I go through life? I've been identifying as having all this big hair for so long. What am I going to do? You need to re-identify. You have to re-identify. And I think that that's the hard thing for people because they don't think that they're ever going to come back from it. They don't think that they're ever going to have that moment where they feel beautiful again. But I have my third round of chemo in two days and I feel wonderful. Am I perfect and tip top every day? No. Sometimes I have emotions that I don't really understand. You know what I mean? I'm going through hot flashes all the time. My body is going through changes. But... I was told by someone really close to me and she said you have to make sure that through this entire process you're staying as active as possible if you wake up and you're feeling good you kill it you kill your day you know what I mean and so that's why I've been able to stay so positive and uplifted every day because when you do chemo it takes two days to you know affect you you're gonna feel fine the next two days but that's when it really like starts so about two days after it had started kicking in I got excruciating back pains and it woke me up at like three something in the morning it was kind of like a throb like when you're on your period and you're just like achy and then around 6 a.m. it still was happening and I was like okay I have to take something now and then around 8 it was like it's, that medicine hadn't done anything and so I waited for my parents to get up and I went in their room and we put a heating pad on and it like vibrated and I don't know what happened after that but I got up and I was playing with my son and I was just like oh and it felt like it was like breaking me down like uh, 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 type of thing and it it felt like the strum of a guitar every string has a different vibe you know what I mean and it was like every level was like a different pain and it like built and I dealt with that for probably about a good hour and a half before it was like okay we need to do something but I called the doctor because that's something that you want to really really do if you have anything that's suspicious or if you're going through anything the first thing you want to do is call your doctor and they ended up getting me in to be able to have an MRI but that was the most excruciating pain of my life and I've had a whole child. I've pushed a whole child out of my vagina. And so after that, after that where it's like I couldn't even walk, it was, it was when I did my first round of chemo and I started feeling the flu-like symptoms and it just takes over your body. But granted, at that point in time, I was like, you know, I'm going to start eating healthy after, you know what I mean? Like I already was a pretty, you know, good eater, but I still was like, you know, indulging in certain things. I wasn't that, that strict. Now it's like, I'm very, very strict on what I eat. And so I feel like it affected me the way that it did because of my body was so, just so welcoming to it. You know what I mean? But now that I juice every day and I'm drinking a lot of water and I'm eating the right things when I did my second round it was to the point where it was like the seventh day and I was like so I guess this isn't gonna affect me this time and it was a relief because it affects everybody when you go through this it affects everybody in your family so when you're hurting it can really put a strain on everybody I was, ooh, ooh, I was gonna have my homeboy do it for me but I was like um Let this be a moment for me. Let this be a memorable moment for me. This is like a stimulation that I have never felt before in my life. It feels so incredible. See, when I knew this was happening, like I'm like, okay, so it doesn't completely freak me out. I like cut like this much of my hair off. And then I was just wearing like a ponytail. And then I was like, you know what? I just want to cut it all off. But I wanted to be like a cute little Jada Pinkett, 1990s little curl and stuff like that. So I did that. 
So when it started coming out, yes, it was devastating. I think it's really just about like being smart with your choices. If you know that you're gonna be doing chemo and your hair is gonna come out possibly, cause I was like, you know what? My hair, my hair is not coming out. I'm just gonna take care of it, blah, 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 blah. It came out, okay? If you know you're gonna go through that process, make it easier for yourself. Get a haircut, get a, get a dope shortcut so it can help you transition. This is my little video of me shaving my hair off. You know, bold moves. You're making bold moves every day. Um, you know, I kind of have a peanut head.